turn the thing. <laughs> so tell me something. It's about time. How'd it come about? And why'd you wait so long? <laughs> well, it was something I was never going to do at all. But I got a phone call one day from New York City from a guy named Mika Polyova, who uh, had just gotten off the phone with Joe Seeley. And he was looking to speak with some Canadian musicians because he has his own record company. He's a Finnish piano player, and his record company is called BlueMusicGroup.com. And he called me up and said, uh, "I'm looking, you know, for to talk to somebody about maybe releasing some records in the states." And I said, and I, and I thought from and I said, "Well, I have a, I have some music on tape that I thought you maybe you would like to hear." So he started me thinking about the whole idea of putting actually putting a record together. I, I wasn't about to actually go in and into the studio. I thought, I've got these, I have some tapes from a concert with Jim Hall and Joe Lovano and uh, Greg Osby from uh, 1970 from Montreal Jazz Festival. And I also have great tapes of um, Phil Dwyer, Don Thompson and I playing at the Ontario Science Center, which is part of the uh, then CJRT uh, uh, jazz um, concert series from, from Ontario Sound Center, which uh, Ted, Ted O'Reilly called me about this. This was again in, in the year 2000. And uh, he said, uh, would you like to come in with your own band? And I said, uh, sure, can I have a quartet? He said, no, <laughs> get too much money. So I took in a trio, and that trio was Phil Dwyer, Don Thompson, and I. So we, I figured out how to, how to work the most magic with those three guys. So Phil plays piano, Don plays piano, so I put them... So I got that group together and put enough music together for one concert. So I decided to put that on the record because that night of playing at the Science Center was the very first time I ever had my own group. And um, so Phil played uh, a, a tenor, Don played bass, and then they switched. Uh, Don played piano. and. Uh, and we have piano, drums, tenor, and that is forms the middle section of the record. So the record begins with um, concert, uh, of, uh, the, uh, the music from the concert we did with Joe Lovano, Jim Hall, Don Thompson, and myself in Montreal. And then we included uh, some, uh, a third concert we did with uh, Greg Osby on alto. So I put together these three uh, things together and um, how sent far it back off does, to Mika. How far back does it go? So it goes back to 2000. 2000. So okay. all of those, the, those three concerts were basically all in 2000. But the thing about it is, is that the quality of the music, qual quality of the playing, and the, and the sound of it was so good that I had the best drum sound I'd ever had recorded in the studio. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, and this was live, it was just beautiful. It was uh, it was done by the CBC, so it was already mixed, mm -hmm. came pre-mixed, and uh, and uh, the concert from the Science Center was uh, recorded by who used to do all those concerts, and he basically had really only recorded classical music, and so he had a kind of a sensibility about how to record acoustic instruments. So, so the sound for that was already pre-mixed. So I really it was just a matter of putting it together. In a in a timely fashion, and putting the tunes together and the order of the tunes, and uh, and plus Mika, uh, ha, his company is an online company. So what I really had been thinking about but never enacted was to put an album out that was basically online only, since this is the future of the music. And um, so that's what I was aiming for. And then uh, then I decided that well we needed an album cover, so I had the cover art done by a guy named Peter Kankura. He's a saxophone player, uh, uh, works with a piano player named Matt Newton, and he is also a graphic artist, and he came up with the, the cover art and then and also the inside. And I did the liner notes, and it's a family affair. <laughs> now, uh, you didn't press that many for here, though? Just uh, No, I just pressed a thousand, a thousand uh, for right. promotional copies, and it's also, I have, uh, it's available at Gregorian uh, right. uh, Music Store in Yorkville, which is really the only place you can buy it. Uh, outside of online and at my concerts. Right. So I've been selling these at, at concerts. And, uh, now did he master it over there? Uh, mastered it at Healy's Music uh, here. Okay. Uh, or, uh, yeah, in, in Toronto. They have a factory in Ottawa and Toronto. So again, Peter Kankur uh, turned me on to them and they, they, they pressed a, a thousand for a reason, reasonable price. And, uh, and, uh, but if you go online, 
uh, and download the entire album off the bluemusicgroup.com website. You get two extra tunes with uh, Greg Osby, Jim Hall, Don and I. We've like two fairly long tunes. So you've got another 20 minutes of music uh, on the online release. Now off the subject, uh, just to add to what we have here, yes. give me maybe two or three of the greatest highlights in your life playing. Oh, wow. Um, so a lot of, a lot of, uh, there are a lot of highlights. highlights. Oh, let me see. Well, um, many highlights. Well, pro possibly the first was playing with John Handy at the Monterey Jazz Festival in 1966, which, uh, uh, for 6,000 people, which subsequently became a best selling Columbia recording. John Handy. Michael White on violin, Don Thompson on bass, and Jerry Hahn on gu guitar. It was a it was a quintet that we had in the '60s, and that was a that was our first concert, and turned out to be the first record I ever made. Wow! So that and that was uh, uh, you know a standing ovation, and it was quite something for a 20 year old yeah. at the time. And um, uh, well, they used to play at Bourbon Street and places like that, right? Pardon me? You used to play at Bourbon Street? Yeah, yeah I played at Bourbon Street. Anybody stand out from that time that you... Uh, well, Jim Hall, obviously, and because yeah. uh, uh, we recorded live there. Now, you played Paul Desmond, Don too? Thompson. I played with Paul Desmond, yeah. We didn't, I didn't record mm -hmm. with him, but uh, I played the first time. Paul came to town twice, so I played with the first time. Then Jerry Fuller, I played the next time. That's when it was recorded. And I played with Frank Rosalino and uh, Barney Kessel and... Uh, uh, Zoot Sims and uh, um, uh, Carl Fontana, Bill Watrous, uh, uh, Jack Sheldon, uh, you know, the list is just endless. Mm -hmm. All the people that played there, it's, uh, those are all outstanding. Well, uh, recently, I mean a couple of years ago, you did the Eddie Daniels, that great double CD set with Eddie Daniels. Uh, we did that in New York, yeah, yeah. the, uh, um, um, you know, was that with Roger Calloway, mm -hmm. Eddie Gomez, and a string quartet. Right. Yeah. Um, that was done in New York. And I remember we had to redo the, uh, redo one of the pieces on that because the master was stolen. <laughs> we had to go back into the studio and record that again wow. uh, in 19, uh, 1987. Mm -hmm. I'd been in New York for a couple of years at that time. Um, uh, let's see, I played the White House with, uh, with the Fifth Dimension in 1969. <laughs> Met Richard Nixon and Pat and, and the whole gang, Spiro Agnew. Wow. That was quite something. And, uh, and uh, that was uh, following the Democratic National Convention in 1968 with all the riots and bombs going off. And uh, we were in kind of the middle of all that. Uh, we were playing for Hubert Humphrey, who was going right, running for vice president. So that was uh, so to be. Those are that was kind of a more socio-political uh, um, situation to be in. There was so much going on in the late '60s, and we were kind of in the middle of all that. These days. These days. Yeah. Anything standing out now? Um, standing well, well um, we're about to go on tour with this group, with my own group. Uh, this summer, we're going to be playing at uh, ten or twelve jazz festivals. All across Canada, and uh, um, I've been to. I was in Japan this this last year with uh, Jim Hall, Ron Carter, uh, Jeff Keiser, and um, Greg Osby to do um, uh, music from Concerto de Aaron Wes, which was a, a piece that Jim had done for CTI in the 70s, and uh, we were over there for like three days and did the concerts there. Um,